So today I want to cover a very interesting topic. Now I don't know if you have been keeping up with um, news events on YouTube concerning the Earth's poles. Uh, they've been talking about this for quite for quite a few years. Um, I got a lot of information that I want to share. Let's get started. We'll start with this particular scripture. There's something in here that's very, very interesting. And actually, there's a couple of things here. Isaiah 24 and verse 1. Behold, Jehovah, not the Lord. His name was never the Lord. His name is not the Lord and shall never be the Lord makes the earth empty and makes it waste. He turned it upside down. So in Hebrew it says amiss or ava means amiss to bend, to twist. All right? On its face. On its face, it literally means to turn it upside down. Is that a pole flip? People are talking about it a lot. Now I have to ask this question. Is that yet one more reason why world leaders are acting very strangely? Is that the reason why a certain CEO said, in his own words, we are going to reduce the population of the world by 50% in 2023? read a little bit more of it. Remember, he turns it upside down and he scatters abroad the inhabitants thereof. Everyone scattered. Okay? All right. Now, I'm not going to play this video, but you might want to. I, I'll try to put the link if I can remember to do so in um, down below. The title is, It's Happening, The Earth's Poles Are Flipping. Should we worry? Well, the poles flipped once before. But there is, scientists claim that 40-some thousand years ago, they don't know, that the earth poles flipped, and then shortly thereafter it flipped again. I don't know, I, I've got so many uh, websites up here, I can hardly keep up with what I have here already. But as you know, the flood came. Now, I'm not sure, I, 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 I don't think there was a polar flip during the flood, although there could have been, but there was one after the flood, shortly. And polar flips do cause continents to move. Now, it does not say in this particular chapter that there was a polar flip. But something happened to the continents, and it is written here. Start in verse 21, Genesis 10. Shem, also the father of the children of Eber, the brother of Japheth, the elder. Even unto him were children born. I find it interesting 
and it says, calls him the brother of Japheth. Well, wasn't Ham? Wasn't Ham the brother of Japheth too? Even unto him were children born, the children of Shem, Elam, that is today, Iran, and Asher, that would be Assyria, there are only maybe a couple hundred thousand left on the earth, are Paxhad, and Lud, or Lud, and Aram. Aram is mainly Syria and parts of Iraq. The children of Aram, Ut and Ho, or Hu, Gehether, and Mash. And our packs had begat Shalach, and Shalach begat Eber, and unto Eber, or Eber, were born two sons. The name of the one was Peleg. Why? What does Peleg mean? Earthquake. Hmm? A terrible thing happened on the earth while Shem or while um, Eber was alive. I don't know if Shem was alive during those days. So his name was Earthquake. Peleg, Earthquake. Because in his days was the earth split. Which means the continents broke apart. From horrendous earthquake. Now, you can listen to some of these videos about pole flipping. Okay? And they will tell you that the continents start moving. Now, do these people really know what really is going to go on during a pole flip? No, they don't. But they can guess. And you can use the wisdom that was given to you from above to sort through that which might be truthful and that which might be just a guessing game. But clearly... The earth was split, was divided, which means the continents were split apart, and which is the reason why Eber named his son Peleg. Due to earthquakes, huge, huge earthquakes. All right? Now, One month ago, NASA just announced that they are monitoring a huge escalating anomaly in the Earth's magnetic field. What do you suppose that might be? Hmm? And you can be certain, folks, that the politicians, the military leaders, and etc., are way ahead understanding what is going on with these kinds of events and they want to keep you in the dark about them. Why? Because they don't want crowds with pitchforks coming after them for any reason. And again, I say maybe that is the reason why they want to reduce the world's population before these events occur. Now, why am I speaking in these terms? 
Well, I received a strike uh, about a month ago when I pointed out which CEO announced that the world's population would be reduced by 50% in 2023. I played his video, him actually saying it, and they gave me a copyright strike. That strike is gone. But you can look it up. You, you've got a brain. You've got a keyboard. You know what to do. Ancient trees show when the Earth's magnetic field was last flipped. Well, they still don't know when. They said it occurred 42,000 years ago. All right. Really? Now, moving along, the next subject matter is about World War III. And after this video, if you don't believe that World War III is, is here, then just go keep on sleeping. Because... This YouTube channel is not for you. So we have the foreign minister of Germany says, yes, we are at war with Russia. You can Google it yourself. Okay. This, um, I know this is a pro-Russian website. I understand that. But I didn't find it on this website. I found it on another website. Okay? But the most important, crucial point is that to do it together and to avoid blame game in Europe because we are at war against Russia and not against each other. That is the foreign minister of Deutschland. Now, I need to remind everyone that Operation Barbarossa is still fresh in the minds of the elder population in Russia, and they teach it about it, teach about it in schools in Russia everywhere. And all this is done. What this foreign minister did. And recently, I believe it was yesterday or day before yesterday, yesterday, the approval of the sending of leopard tanks, German leopard tanks, to Russia. Well, I'm, I'm, I'm sorry, to Ukraine to fight against Russia. And of course, the elites in Russia are going to say, this is... What do you call it? Um, Operation Barbarossa 2, Part 2. And if you don't believe that, I'll back this up a little bit. I might pull that, pull that up. Hope I don't miss my spot here. Okay, Operation You'll find it in, um, it's on, it was on um, War News. So, if you dig around, you'll find it. How the, um, how the Russians view German tanks coming into Ukraine as Barbarossa Part 2. Okay, so it's further down. I won't bother right now because um, state secret. I hadn't seen this one before. But the one that I want to look at is this one. Trump warning. First tanks, then nukes. End this crazy war. 
So on his true social, he said, first tanks, then there will be nuclear bombs. Well, this, what this proves is even an idiot can see what's coming. Okay? It doesn't take a, somebody with a prophetic mind. A backwoods hillbilly like myself can figure this out. And to those who haven't figured it out by now, you are sleeping. I'll get to a scripture that talks about those who are sleeping in just a few minutes, okay? I don't need to um, stay on this particular uh, article. That's good enough. Make sure I want to put this up. Uh, uh, well, yeah. So, in the, um, in March, February, March 2014, when Russia took Crimea, they sent what they called, what the, uh, NATO called little green men. Men with no national insignias on them, on their uniform. Um, little green men are mass soldiers of the Russian Federation in unmarked green army uniforms and carrying modern Russian military weapon and equipment who appeared during the Rus Russo-Ukrainian War in 2014. <coughs> the first term arose during the occupation of Crimea by the Russian Federation, a period from late February to March 2014 when such forces occupied it and blockaded the Simperfol or Simper... Sim Simperopol... Simferopol, International Airport, most military bases in Crimea. All right, so what they did was they sent non-Russian soldiers <coughs> to take Crimea. All right. And you will find uh, a little bit more information about this. Like like this particular um, on Radio Free Europe, Radio Liberty, you can uh, play the video Invasion of the Little Green Men, all right? So then you have Russia's Wagner Group doesn't actually exist, and that makes it all the more challenging to get grips with. And of course, uh, the Wagner Group is fighting side by side with Russia and actually makes better advances than the Russian troops but they are not officially Russian troops. <coughs> right. I've got this jumbled up a little bit, so please bear with me. I'm going to go ahead and erase this one because it's not necessary anymore. Uh, this one's not necessary anymore. I want to keep this. This one's not necessary anymore. Uh, I'll save this for a second. Now, this one I don't need. Okay, U.S. Army veteran killed fighting on Ukraine's southern front. A previous ver correction, a previous version of the story said that there were at least eight Americans killed in Ukraine. That was inaccurate. There may have been at least ten. This story was updated at 4.15 Eastern Standard Time on November 16, 2022. So how many NATO mercenaries, which is what Wagner Group is, a mercenary group, who don't identify themselves as Russian military. Well, the American, the British, and the Polish mercenaries don't identify themselves as American troops either. But it was the Russian mercenaries who took Crimea, wasn't it? All right. 
He never deployed as a U.S. soldier. Sure. So this is how we're going to fight the war. We're going to say it's not really a war, just like Russia did. It's a, just like uh, Harry Truman said about the Korean War, called it a police action. So beginning with the Korean War, they were no longer going to call most of these wars wars. If they didn't want to, like the Persian Gulf conflict, Operation Desert Storm. Well, those of us who aren't participants, we call it the Iraqi War. All right, let's see if we can find some more here. At his base near the front lines outside of Kherson, an ex-British soldier named J.K. shows me a video of what it's like in a scene from the World War I film 1917. He shows him and two other volunteers, sure they're volunteers, walking through a burning, smoking tree line, having spent two hours pinned down by artillery and sniper fire that killed three Ukrainian comrades. It was a grim, exhausting day as the soldiering experiences go far more rewarding than the life in the British Army. How many, how many uh, NATO mercenaries do you think are in Ukraine right now? There's a reason why I keep talking like this, folks. I'll get there. Polish Parliament to grant amnesty to Poles illegally fighting for Ukraine since 2014. Pol since 2014, the Poles, Polish mercenaries, many of them uh, have been fighting in uh, for Ukraine. And there were so many of them that they had no choice but to um, publicly because it's against the law over there in Poland. This necessity arises from the need to adjust the legal conditions applicable to Polish citizens wishing to assist the armed forces of Ukraine in defending their territorial integrity and the dem democratic legal order of the Ukrainian state as well as to counter the aggressive... We know what's going on here, folks. Polish citizens that de decided to join the Ukrainian military are motivated by solidarity with a country innocently attacked by an aggressor who does not conceal hostile intentions also towards Poland, as well as by patriotism, which thus acting for the security of Poland, it adds. Okay. What do we have here? The WHO is preparing for nuclear war. Health Body publishes lists of medicines for nations to stockpile in case of radiation or nuclear emergency as the EU warns Russia is at war with the West. You notice how they word it? But you see, the German foreign minister said the EU is at war with Russia. She let the cat out of the bag, so to speak. All right? So we see that. Now, going back to Daniel 9. Four years, since 2016, I believe it was. It could have been 2017. But somewhere around there, I saw a statement briefly made by somebody else questioning the Daniel 9 narrative. And when I saw that statement um, questioning that narrative, I began to fever feverishly start studying Daniel 9 and I learned something. 
like I said, this is somewhere between 2016, 2017, so it was... At least six years ago, I believe, something like that. And I started talking about this. And I did it over and over and over and over again. What I was what I found out that time ran out in 2016. The time was up. And yet, nothing happened. And here's how I found out that the time was up. Seventy weeks are determined upon your people and the Kodesh city to finish the transgression. So at that point in time, the time of the finishing of recognizing the transgression of Israel was over. I know that there are some of you who have a hard time with that. It is not your job, nor it is your right, to challenge how the forgiver of sins forgives sins, after all. You want your sins forgiven too, don't you? And neither is it my right. Let's continue. To make an end of sins. What sin? Well, the sin of rejecting the Moshiach. Let's continue. You'll see it. And to make reconciliation, or to appease, to cover, to pacify, to make propitiation. So time had to go by. For iniquity, guilt and punishment, so the time of punishment has a set time. And once that time is over, it's over. And then to bring in long duration righteousness. To bring in righteousness. Israel can't bring in righteousness on their own. Jehovah is going to send and bring in righteousness to the people of Israel to seal up, to affix a seal on the vision and the prophecy and to anoint the Kodesh Kodesh. The Kodesh Kodesh is the Holy of Holies, the location of where the Holy of Holies is. And right now, it is being trampled upon by the Gentiles. Know therefore and understand that from the going forth of the commandment to restore and build Jerusalem unto Moshiach the Prince. Remember, I showed you scriptures where no, no, Prince, what is it, ruler or leader? He told a man, who made me your judge, your ruler, your leader? I don't know if I can find that. I have to think about the wording. Who made me judge? Maybe I can find it. Because sometimes a search in this particular uh, Bible hub doesn't work very well. Who made me? Right there, Luke 12 and verse 14. Who made me a judge or divider over you? And his name is Yehoshua, not 
Jesus. So in those days, he was not a leader, a judge. Who man who made me a judge or a divider over you? He was a suffering servant. A judge. And yet, when he comes back again, he is going to be the judge. So he wasn't the judge at his first coming. So this particular scripture is talking about not the first coming this particular section of the scripture. Shall be seven weeks. Now, it's not, doesn't say seven weeks plus three score and two weeks. You know how I know that? Let's read it carefully. No, therefore, understand, for going forth the commandment to restore and build Jerusalem unto Messiah, the ruler. This is when he comes to take Jerusalem for himself. So this enumeration, seven weeks, is at the very end from the time of the going forth the commandment, the call to speech, the word. That occurred on the Roman calendar, 1967. General Shlomo Gorin said those very, very words right around Shavuot. I have showed that to you many, many times. So, why am I separating the three score and two weeks from the seven weeks? Because, right here in verse 26, and after six, three score and two weeks shall Messiah be cut off. Shall Moshiach, or Mashiach, be cut off. That's his first coming, when he wasn't a judge. When he, so, 62 weeks is from the time of the building of the street and the wall. The street and the wall, built and the wall, even in troublous times. That was Nehemiah. 62 weeks. It was 434 years from the day that Nehemiah informed the king of Persia, and I have proven it many, many times, that he was finished building the street and the wall. 434 years later, Messiah, M Mashiach, was cut off. But you see, you Christians, you want to mess that up. You want to muddy up the water so that you can muddy the water further with this next one. The people of the prince that shall destroy the city and the sanctuary. Who did that? Well, you Christians, because of what Cyril, the liar, said in his 15th catechetical lecture, you believe that this event right here to destroy the city and the sanctuary is a future event. It is not. It occurred on your Roman calendar on the year 70. And it occurred on the most mournful day of the Hebrew calendar. Go figure out what that is. But you Christians, you wouldn't know because you would rather listen to the lie, which is why you are asleep. Okay? For one week, they ravaged, pillaged the city 
for an entire seven years. And this thing in the midst of the week. Titus made a firm agreement with his generals and his legions that they were going to starve the people out. That's how they were going to sack the city. But halfway into the time, he lost control of his men because the Jews put up a greater fight from inside the city than they thought and they couldn't take it anymore. And they burned the city. They burned the temple. Titus wanted to bring the temple piece by piece to the Roman pantheon of the gods that they conquered to prove that their idol, Satan, Deuspiter, the same idol that the Romans today, the Latin Christians by name worship as their idol. And you English-speaking people, you do too. You just have another name for them. Gaut. I warned you that the time was up. For six years, I told you that the calculation proves that the time was up. So... Was my calculation wrong? No. Matthew 25 in the kingdom, or Malku, of heaven be like unto ten virgins which took their lamps and went forth to meet the bridegroom. I would dearly love to know what, how to pronounce bridegroom in Hebrew. I have looked high and low and the only way I will be able to do it if one of you Jewish folks or Hebrew-speaking folks will tell me. I would appreciate it. The five of them were wise and the five were foolish. And they that were foolish took their lamps and took no oil with them. But the wise took their oil in their vessels with their lamps. And while the bridegroom did what? Tarried. He delayed. Delayed. Why? After all, I have proven many, many times that the time of Israel's sin was up. Why the delay? Why? And then they all slumbered and slept. All of them, including the wise. Now, it doesn't say at midnight. It says in the midst there was a cry made, Behold, the bridegroom comes, go you out to meet him. And all those virgins arose and trimmed their lamps. And the foolish said unto the wise, Give us of your oil, for our lamps are gone out. They have no light. They're blind. They cannot move. Very interesting statement in Luke 21, and the previous chapter in Matthew 24 about how it's, it's in Luke 21 Sunoke upon the Gentiles they were held in place they could not move distress is the word but the wise answered, saying, Not so, lest there not be enough for us. And I find it amazing that the Gentiles were under distress and could not move. But it doesn't say that Israel was. Because in the previous chapter, Matthew 24 says, The elect are going to be gathered. And as I showed you in the previous video, 
You should watch that pre the video that I did um, a couple of days ago. I'll try to put a link on everything on this particular video, including yesterday, uh, day before yesterday's video. Because it's absolutely important that you watch that video and then watch this one. But go rather to those who sell and buy for yourselves. And while they went to buy, the bridegroom came and they were ready. Went in with him to the marriage. Now, the marriage of what? The marriage of Moshiach to Jerusalem, who is the, the bride of Moshiach? Well, the Christians claim that the bride of the church is Jesus. Well, I have proven to you that Jesus is Satan himself. So the church married Satan. Who is the bride then of Yehoshua? Let's find out. It is in go by go by um, memory if I can. Is it twenty one or is it twenty? Yes, I do believe. Yes. Watch this. Strong concordance. All right. And I saw a new heaven and a new earth, and the first heaven and the first earth were passed by, were gone. And there was no more. Yam, which means the Mediterranean Sea disappeared. Uh, Thalassa? Isn't that Mediterranean Sea in Greek? Isn't it? And I, Yohanan, saw the holy city, the new Jerusalem, come from Jehovah out of the sky, prepared as a bride adorned for her husband. Let's look in Revelation 20, or is it 19? Is it... Um... It might be 18. Nope. Is it 21? Oh, I'm going to find it. Don't you worry. Oh, we're just there. Okay. Oh, it, it was right here. In verse 10, it says, He carried me away into this... Uh, Ruach to a great and high mountain and showed me that great city, the Kodesh Yerushalayim, descending out of the sky from Jehovah, having the glory of Jehovah, and her light was as stone as the most precious. Oh, here it is right here in verse 9. And there came unto me one of the seven messengers which had the seven vials full of the seven last plagues and talked with me saying, Come here, I will show you the bride, the lamb's wife. So the church went and married to a false idol. This is their words, not mine. To Jesus. And the Moshiach of Israel will be married to Jerusalem. I gave you two proofs two okay so wouldn't then these um virgins be the friends of the bride and the groom well the ones who let the oil run out of their lamp apparently were not 
They didn't care. By their fruits you shall know them. They didn't bring extra oil. Now, I showed you that troops, uh, EU troops and U.S. troops, little red, white, and blue men, are in Ukraine. Now, let's listen to what Joe Biden says about what will be the what will be the definition of world. War three. I hope you're ready for this. We're going to make sure Ukraine has the weapons to defend themselves from invading Russian force. And, and we will send money and food aid to save Ukrainian lives. We're going to welcome Ukrainian refugees with open arms if, in fact, they come all the way here. And as we provide as we provide this support to Ukraine, we're going to continue to stand together with our allies in Europe and send an unmistakable message that we will defend every inch of NATO territory, every single inch, with a united, galvanized NATO. One movement. That's why I moved over 12,000 American forces along the borders with Russia, Latvia, Estonia, Lithuania, Romania, etc. Because they move once. Granted, if we respond, it is World War III, but we have a sacred obligation on NATO territory, a sacred obligation, Article 5, and we will not, although we will not fight the Third World War in Ukraine. Putin's war against Ukraine was never be a victory. Democrats are rising to meet the moment, relying, r rallying the world on the side of peace and security. What, 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 what? Did you hear that? Rallying on the side of peace and security. We're showing the strength and we'll never falter. But look, the idea, the idea that we're going to send in offensive equipment and have planes and tanks and trains uh, going in with American pilots and American crews, just understand, and uh, don't kid yourself, no matter what you all say, that's called World War III. You heard it from his own mouth. But wait, you will say. He said tanks, planes, and so and so forth with American crews. All right? Let me show you something. All right. Now, the Ukrainians do not have the infrastructure for Abrams tanks. They can't use them. They don't have the infrastructure for them. Abrams tanks uses jet fuel. Ukrainians don't have the infrastructure to bring jet fuel to these 31 Abrams tanks. So who's going to bring in the infrastructure to fuel and to drive these Abrams tanks? Hmm? You heard it from his own mouth. Politicians have a way of parsing words, kind of like when Bill Clinton, President of the United States, talked about his first experience with marijuana, or he claimed it was his only experience. He said he smoked, but he didn't inhale. At his trial, he said it just, it depends on what the meaning of the word is, is. They love to play with and parse words. 
But you heard what he said. You heard what he said. Let's listen to it again. Don't kid yourself, no matter what you all say. That's called World War Three. Never falter, but look, the idea, the idea that we're going to send in offensive equipment and have planes and tanks and trains uh, going in with American pilots and American crews, just understand, and uh, don't kid yourself, no matter what you all say. That's called World War Three. Okay? So, take his advice. Don't kid yourself. World War Three is here. He said it. The um, foreign minister of Germany said it. I really need to go find... Well, no. I think this will be enough. Make sure... Oh, I... Uh, okay. We'll read First Thessalonians 5. By the times and the seasons, brethren, I have no need to write unto you, for you shall know perfectly that the day of Jehovah will come so as a thief in the night, for when they shall say, Peace and safety. All right? Lithuania, Romania, etc. Let's just... Together with our allies in Europe and send an unmistakable message that we will defend... Let, let's go all the, all the way back. We'll find that we peace and safety. We will send money and food aid to save your Ukrainian lives. We're going to welcome Ukrainian refugees with open arms if, in fact, they come all the way here. And as we provide, as we provide this support to Ukraine, we're going to continue to stand together with our allies in Europe and send an unmistakable message that we will defend every inch of NATO territory, every single inch with a united, galvanized NATO. One movement. That's why I moved over 12,000 American forces along the borders with Russia, Latvia, Estonia, Lithuania, Romania, etc. Because they move once. Granted, if we respond, it is World War III, but we have a sacred obligation on NATO territory, a sacred obligation, Article 5. And we will not, although we will not, fight the Third World War in Ukraine. Putin's war against Ukraine was never be a victory. Democrats are rising to meet the moment, relying, r rallying the world on the side of peace and security. On the side of peace and security. There you see it right there. I'm going to put it in big, bold letters for you to see. You see it right there. They're talking World War III out of the same breath that they're talking peace and security. That ought to be enough to get your attention. That the day of Jehovah so comes as a thief in the night, for when they shall say peace and security, that's what it says, not safety, peace and security. Right there, you see it. Then sudden destruction comes upon them as travail upon a woman with child, and they shall not escape. They can't flee. But you, brethren, are not in darkness, so that the day should take overtake you as a thief. You should it should be plain as day. The only reason why you'd be in darkness is you are completely consumed and enchanted by modern technology, by the convenience of grocery stores within walking distance of you from the city, or even those who live far from the grocery stores, mere 15, 20 minutes away, You are children of the light and children of the day. We are not of the night nor of darkness. Let us not sleep. Don't be sleeping. Like the five wise and the five foolish virgins. Why? Why are you sleeping? As do others, but let us watch and be sober. 
They that sleep, sleep in dark, sleep in the night, and they that are drunk are drunk at night. Drunken by modern technology, folks. And they don't realize that modern technology is going to be their demise. Until nukes start flying. But let us who of the day be sober, putting on the breastplate of faith and goodwill and a helmet for the hope and the expectation of not soteria, salvation would be Yeshua. Yehoshua is the deliverer. Yeshua is what he delivers. There is a difference. For Yehovah has not appointed us unto wrath, but to obtain Yeshua by our Moshiach, Yehoshua, not Jesus. See what they've done here? I'll show it to you again. Yehoshua, not Jesus. They can stay lie to you, just like they lied to you on, just like the president just lied to you. But he did tell you what the definition of World War Two, World War Three is. Claims that he's not going to send troops to operate this equipment. And yet he's sending 31 or 30 Abrams tanks which require the logistics of the United States of America to operate. Unbelievable. This is how they lie to you, folks. This is how they deceive you. And they deceived you by claiming Yehoshua's name is Jesus when nothing can be further from the truth. Who died for us, whether we wake or are asleep, we should live together with him. Therefore, comfort yourselves together and edify one another even as you already do. So, Take comfort in understanding. I'm going to show you a scripture that's going to show how you are going to live through this event. Those of you who proclaim the name Jehovah, who proclaim Shem Jehovah. Okay? So what we're going to do first is we're going to go to Yol 2. I'm going to go to why you're going to be saved. And then we're going to find out how you're going to be saved from nuclear warfare. Here's the why right here. It shall, uh, whoever shall proclaim, call, or read Shem Yehovah. Not the name of the Lord. No, no. Shem, Yehovah, will slip away while the others are trapped. How are these people going to be slipped away? Slip away to Mount Zion in Jerusalem, Not the fake holy city in Rome and not be raptured up into the end of heaven forever and ever. No, be delivered to Mount Zion, Jerusalem. Because in Jerusalem shall be deliverance, as Jehovah has said many times. Now, there is a statement of salvation. We go to Isaiah 24 again. And Isaiah, he is perplexed. He sees fire everywhere. It's what he sees in his vision. Glorify Jehovah in the fire, in the flames. The name Shem, see that? Shem, Jehovah, 
Elohim of Israel in the coastlands of the sea while it's on fire. Read the story of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego again. That's how. But wait. I got more for you. What does it say right there? In Isaiah 43, verse 2, When you walk through fire, you shall not be burned. That's the reason why the Gentiles will be trapped, but those who proclaim, call, pray to Shem Yehovah, will be able to walk through the fire and not be burned. You won't need iodine tablets. You won't need anything except to obey the words of the two witnesses who are coming to collect you, if you are of the elect. This is what who Jehovah says that chose Jacob, chose Yahakob. There are various ways to say it. Uh, today, modern Jews say Yaakov. He formed you, Israel. Fear not. I have redeemed you like a redeeming kinsman. I have called you by your name. You belong to me. When you pass through the water, when you pass through the Atlantic Ocean into the Mediterranean Sea when it's on fire, and then through the rivers, they will not overflow you. When you walk through the fire, you shall not be burned, neither shall the flame kindle upon you. Jehovah Elohim, the Holy One of Israel, your Savior, I gave Egypt for your ransom and Ethiopia and Sheba for you. Because you are precious in my sight. And you will achieve honor. I have loved you. Therefore, I will give up men for you and people. For your life. Fear not. Come in your seed from the east. And gather and collect you from the west. I will say to the north. Give them up. I will say to the south, do not keep back. Bring my sons from far and my daughters from the ends of the earth. Everyone that is called by my name or everyone that proclaims my name. You see? You see? All who proclaim his name do you proclaim his name? That's what his name is what saves you. God cannot save. Jesus cannot save. Allah cannot save. Krishna cannot save. Deus and Deus Bater cannot save. Those names cannot save you. Only one name can save you. Yehoshua, that is the name. Everyone that proclaims, reads, and calls his name. 
For I have created him for my glory. I have formed him, yes, I have made him. Bring forth the blind people that have eyes and the deaf that have ears. Israel, bring them here and let the Gentiles be also gathered together. And let the people be assembled. Who among them can declare this and show us the former things? Let them bring forth their witnesses for justification. And let them hear and say, it is true. You are my witnesses, says Jehovah, and my servant, whom I have chosen, that you may know and believe and understand and face me, that there is no, none like me that comes before or after. Jehovah, and besides me, there is no Savior. That's the reason why the Deliverer's name is Yehoshua. Has the name Jehovah in it. If the name of your Savior does not have the name Jehovah in it, it is a fake and a false name, and that name cannot save anyone. I have declared and have saved. I have showed that there is no other idol among you. Therefore, you are my witnesses, says Jehovah. Ayo. Before the day, first day, Okay, no one can deliver them out of my hand and my work, and who shall stop me? And this is during the destruction of Babylon. How much more evidence do you need, folks? What is it going to take for you to wake up? Why can't you just abandon all of your idolatry and call upon the name Jehovah? Why can't you? Why can't you be a friend to Israel and to love Jerusalem? That's a question only you can answer. But you are my witnesses of how long I have proclaimed the name Shem Jehovah. So when these bombs start falling, don't be fearful. Wait until the cry is made. Go to Jerusalem. Because his wife is Jerusalem. So if he is going to be married to Jerusalem, you have to go to Jerusalem and do not forget where salvation is going to be. I just showed it to you in Yol 2. Please do not be hard-headed. And shall, uh, whosoever shall call upon Shem Jehovah shall slip away to Mount Zion, Jerusalem, because in Jerusalem shall be deliverance as Jehovah has spoken. So the remnant whom Jehovah calls Israel and everyone who calls upon Shem Jehovah. How hard is it, folks? Hmm? How difficult is that? Let's not be difficult. 